Welcome to the Irish Farmers Journal Weekly Podcast, brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy. Uh, this is Peter McCann, Northern Ireland correspondent with the Irish Farmers Journal. I'm in, uh, in Belfast at an event discussing genetically modified crops. I'm uh, joined by one of the speakers, uh, Kevin Fulton. He's uh, from the University of Florida. And on simple terms, like, what, what is the main difference between GM technologies and conventional breeding that, that, that it's been on for, for hundreds of years, I suppose? Sure, well, conventional breeding is very um, difficult. It takes a long time to be able to get all of the genes in the one genetic background that still produces all of the characteristics that you want. It's um, oftentimes very challenging to breed a new crop. However, to take something that's already very good and give it one extra gene, one extra trait, maybe resistance to insects, maybe um, resistance to um, a virus. We can do that in the laboratory, and that's what makes the GM approach a good complement to traditional breeding. In general, what is the scientific community saying about GM food uh, technologies and uh, should they be used in, in wider food production? Well, the, the scientific community is very aligned in saying that these are very good technologies that have uh, no evidence of any adverse health effects that certainly have some environmental consequences we need to be aware of. But in general, the benefits by far outweigh the risks. Right now, they're just certain large agricultural crops, mostly in uh, the USA and in South America. But, you know, for Europe, there's many good examples of benefits that could come from these technologies if uh, they were allowed. And I think they could be very helpful for farmers here. The one argument smallholder farmers would have is if it was widely used, there's the potential that uh, the entire market would be dominated by a very small number of uh, multinational companies. And um, Is that true or is that a myth? Well, I think that is true because the regulatory climate is one... We've created a situation where only the large companies can navigate the regulatory hurdles. If we were to loosen the regulation, we might have a situation where smaller companies could compete. Maybe universities could compete. Maybe smaller um, uh, government um, laboratories could put um, products in the hands of farmers. So I think that maybe we need to rethink the regulatory system in order for us to be able to get these technologies out faster. Uh, finally, uh, Kevin, the, I suppose the, the whole idea of the Royal Society's event here and uh, the series of events and some of the publications they've had is to educate the, the general public on, on, the, on the science-based evidence surrounding the GM. How, how is the, the Royal Society and other scientists going about it? Well, there, we've made a lot of changes in the last few years. We don't just speak to the public with information and facts. And we have to get our scientists and our farmers, our industries, our farm industries to realize that we need to talk to people about how these technologies can help solve problems that all of us care about. What are ways we can improve the environment? What ways can we help farmers remain profitable? What ways can we uh, help the consumer have a better product? What are ways that these uh, technologies can bring food to the hungry? These are the things that we need to be talking about with the public, not about the nuts and bolts of technology, but the good things technology can do. Kevin Holden, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. The Irish Farmers Journal Weekly Podcast, brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy.